probate fraud or estate fraud is a significant, often overlooked method of embezzling money from rightful owners. Anytime there's a death or uh, an estate that's being processed, it's an opportunity for hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to be allocated based on interpretation of a will, a trust, or other estate planning vehicle. And during that time, many instances, a family member, whether they're acting as um, the custodian of the accounts or they are the representation of that estate, maybe has a temptation to do self-dealing or to advantage themselves. Sometimes it's a party that's not even an authorized representative of the estate. Sometimes a relative will take money from a bank account or transfer real estate. The ACFE Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, of which we're a member, had a really good article. Um, Brett Darkin is one of their members also. He's a certified fraud examiner um, about how this works. And it says, you know, death is an inevitable part of life. And as loved ones pass away, many find themselves dealing with a number of practical matters. One is the legal and accounting process that is triggered by the death of a person. When a person dies, their assets can no longer be owned by a dead person. So now it has to be accounted for. Um, oversight provides a legal path for debtors and creditors to make claims on the estate. For example, if there's money owed, that has to be paid. If there's a mortgage on a property, if there's taxes owed, that has to be paid. The problem is people have to face hard topics at a time of loss and change. And unfortunately, because of the hardship, it's an opportunity for unscrupulous fraudsters to prey on victims. It could be fraudsters within the family somebody that thinks they deserve more than what they're given in the will. Sometimes it's outside parties. There's many times investment advisors, and we'll take a look at a couple examples of that, who steal money figuring that no one's going to find out because this family may not know how much was in the account. So fraud in an investment, I'm sorry, in a an estate is a very common scenario. In fact, many of the inquiries um, that we get are from um, people who are part of an estate of a person who's deceased. And they're worried that the money has been um, put in the wrong place, sent to the wrong person. Working on a case right now where a client had a executor of an estate open probate, sell the um, deceased person's property, their house, their real estate, put the money, uh, the, the money that came from closing into an account. Now nobody knows where the money is. And that person now is, is um, not communicating with authorities or with other people. So it can happen within a family. Stop probate fraud, um, you know, from this author, um, Brett Darkin, has examples of cases. It could be Wells Fargo ad advisor, allegedly. It could be family court fraud. Sometimes it's um, the court psychologist that is involved with the fraud. Uh, sometimes it's even the judges dispersing assets the wrong way. Um, an estate attorney that stole money uh, discovered that their insurance won't cover it. A very high profile case, um, Alex Murdoch case in South Carolina, who there's, there's even murder in this case. There's people that have been killed. He tried to have himself killed to collect on insurance. It's discovered as part of this investigation that he embezzled settlement funds from a housekeeper that died at his house, allegedly, and that the insurance money claim that was supposed to go to the family of this deceased housekeeper, he kept. He had one of his buddies that was an attorney, allegedly, um, make up some fake paperwork to keep the money. Um, he was arrested, charges stemming from investigation of misappropriation of settlement funds. This is an attorney. Another example of fraud or misallocation of funds is when there's a trustee in a divorce or in a estate case, they have discretionary power to apply income so they can pay money out to different people. And sometimes the parties might want to challenge that decision of the trustee. Trustee is a position of authority and they may want to challenge what decisions they're making. 
Um, here's an example of a case where a, um, an executor of an estate allegedly offered to advance funds. He, um, it was the conservator of the estate. He received $9.5 million in assets and dispersed $4.3 million. In part of that disbursement, he had 28 checks totaling over half a million dollars, supposedly paid to third parties, but in fact were paid to himself or one of his companies. And the beneficiaries of the conservatorship did not receive copies of the checks that would reveal those. He hid the checks. Another example of a state fraud is um, why it's a victimless crime. A lot of times the people who are doing this fraud think, no one's ever going to find out because nobody knew how many assets the deceased person had. I'll put the money back as, at some point, which they never do. In this, uh, a recent case we worked on, um, the client only wanted to try to find bank accounts of the deceased person. That was their intention. But we recommended look to see if there's any other assets because if the executor is hiding money from a bank account, maybe there's other assets hidden as well. No, I, we, we knew the deceased person. They had no other assets. We recommend searching for other asset classes, which we eventually did. And we found that there were other assets that were not properly put into that estate. There were two vehicles that were owned by the deceased person that were being driven by somebody else. And those people, well, at least one of them, tried to improperly transfer the title to their name after the person died, knowing that no one would ever find out about it. There was actually a real estate investment in a, an apartment building that this deceased person had a partnership in uh, that no relatives knew about, and that was a valuable... No one tried to steal that, but nobody knew about it. So the first step in a probate asset case is to run an asset search on the deceased person. What assets are they supposed to have, and are all of those assets properly being accounted for in the case? Make sure you're getting good legal advice in any probate case. We're not attorneys. We don't give legal advice. Make sure that you're getting good legal advice. But make sure that your attorney or your law firm is doing things strategically, looking for assets, looking for all available resources to put into the, um, the, uh, tr the conservatorship or the, the probate case, the estate, to make sure it's distributed properly. So if the children, grandchildren, other family members are supposed to get certain assets or certain amounts of money that the most amount of assets is included in that and nothing is left out which can be misappropriated or just left abandoned which nobody gets any benefit from. Probate fraud is very, very common. It can be minor, it can be inadvertent, but a lot of times it's a family member or somebody close to the estate that knows the person's dead and knows that these assets maybe aren't going to be noticed if somebody takes them away. It could be something as simple as a valuable antique in the house that somebody steals. It could be something even more um, significant like a bank account or life insurance policy that's not properly accounted for. Make sure you're doing good asset searches and you have your estate fraud prevention plan in place coordinated with a qualified attorney.